The baby's genital were cut open. The woman picks up a branch and stitches her up. After an agonizing cry, only a pool of red blood remains on the rock. This is the traditional practice of circumcision on the African savanna. Wiris was lucky to survive after suffering a high fever for three days following the circumcision. But her sisters were not so lucky. Some of them died of infections and others died in childbirth. Because of the after effects of circumcision, if it's so dangerous, why do they insist on circumcision? Because the locals believe that only circumcision can guarantee the purity of the girls. Only on the wedding day do the girls have their stitches removed by the groom. Wiris, who survived, was not spared this fate. At 14, her father sold Wiris to an older man for five camels. She was to become his fourth wife. Wiris was so distraught that she asked her mother for help. Finally, with her mother's acquiescence, she fled the house in the night and went to her grandmother's house in the capital. But she has to cross the desert alone on the way. Young Wiris had to face many obstacles. Without shoes, her feet were worn down to the skin by hard stones. When she was hungry, she ate twigs. When she was sleepy, she curled up and wrapped her clothes around her body and fell asleep. She didn't know how long she had been walking in the desert, and she was almost raped on the way. After many obstacles, Wiris finally made it to her grandmother's house, but her aunt hated Wiris and refused to take her in. Her gentle grandmother is firmly on Wiris' side. With her help, Wiris managed to get a passport. She went to the Somali embassy in the UK and became a cleaner. She stayed for six years. While working in a restaurant, a man watched Wiris closely. Then he approached her and handed her a business card. He claimed to be a photographer looking for new models. Wiris thought he was a liar. She wanted to throw the card in the trash, but she didn't want to embarrass the man, so she slipped it into her pocket. The girl accidentally saw her roommate and her boyfriend having sex. When the roommate is done, the girl accuses her roommate of being a bad girl. The roommate was shocked to hear this. She was confused as to why the girl would think that way. It's a modern society now, but she is conservative in her thinking. But the girl said seriously that only girls who have been circumcised are the purest of all. The roommate was very confused. She didn't know what circumcision was. Seeing that her roommate still doesn't understand, she lifts up her skirt. The roommate was shocked by what she saw. She asked if the genitals were cut open and then sewn back together. The girl replied yes. Doesn't everyone do that? Then the roommate lifted up her skirt. Seeing this scene in front of her, the girl's worldview collapsed. She Saturday on the bed in tears. Because of the after effects of circumcision, it took her a long time to go to the toilet and she always had stomach pains. On the advice of her roommate, she finally overcame her mental obstacles and came to the hospital. Worried that Wiris could not understand English, the kind doctor hired a male nurse from Somalia to translate for her. The doctor kept telling Wiris to prepare for the operation as soon as possible. But the male nurse twisted the doctor's meaning. The male nurse said she was ashamed to let a male look at her private parts like that. If she insisted on the operation, she would be betraying the nation and its traditions. Wiris was devastated. She was torn and confused. From the hospital, she paced the street alone. A veiled model in the window reminded her of her grandmother. Her grandmother had told her that she had suffered so much and that there would be a worthy reward in the future. Thinking of this, Wiris no longer hesitates. She went back to the hospital and completed the surgery with her roommate by her side. Encouraged by her roommate, she contacted the photographer who left her a business card when she worked in a restaurant. Under the photographer's guidance, she took a series of photos. It was these photos that made her famous in the modeling world. The agent lifted Wiris' skirt and said her bow was too big. Wiris got serious about losing weight and getting in shape. She couldn't do the catwalk in heels, so she asked her roommate to be her trainer. Gradually, Wiris became famous in the modeling world and even received an invitation to New York Fashion Week. But before she left, her agent realized that Wiris' passport had expired six years ago. During her time at the embassy, civil war broke out in Wiris' home country of Somalia. The evacuation of the embassy left Wiris stranded in the UK. As she was young and didn't understand English, Wiris' passport lapsed. The agent was furious. Her huge investment in Wiris had come to naught. Then the plumber suddenly knelt down in front of Wiris and asked her to marry him under false pretenses. He told Wiris that he was just trying to help her get a green card. In order to stay, Wiris agreed without hesitation. In order to cope with immigration checks, Wiris was often forced to pretend to be a married couple in front of them. But the plumber didn't see it that way. He had been in love with Wiris for a long time and wanted to use this opportunity to take her by force. Finally, after a year of waiting, Wiris receives a permanent residence permit from the immigration office. She got divorced and went on to show herself on the international stage. After her rise to fame, people started digging for Wiris' backstory. In 1987, the BBC produced a documentary about Wiris' upbringing. It told a story of the girl who traveled across the desert and lived alone in New York City before becoming an international supermodel. 
The story attracted a lot of attention, but at this point, Weiris said goodbye to the state for a while. She didn't hesitate to take the podium at the United Nations. She tearfully recounted her experience of being forced to undergo circumcision at the age of 20. She explained to the public the physical and psychological damage done to girls by circumcision. As a result of Weiris' efforts and advocacy, a number of countries around the world have banned this persecution of women. However, to this day, more than 6,000 girls are still circumcised every day on the African savannah.